Welcome to the Love Lab Podcast, a safe place to get real about sex. Whether you're a man, woman, single, or couple, this is the show for you. We are your hosts, Kevin Anthony and Celine Remy, and we are here to guide you to go from good to amazing in the bedroom and beyond. All right, welcome back to the Love Lab Podcast. This is episode 93, and it is titled How to Foreplay Tips and Tricks for All. It's an episode about foreplay, need I say more? <laughs> In other words, it's going to be fun. But I do want to say that the reason we decided to do this episode this week is because um, this past weekend we were laying in bed and we were having this deep intellectual discussion and it got Celine all hot and bothered and turned on. And so one of the things that we were, we were thinking about in that moment and talking about uh, after the intellectual conversation, at least anyway, was that, that most people probably wouldn't think that is foreplay or that is something that would turn them on, like having deep discussions about world issues and philosophy and stuff like that. But it was for us. And so we thought, okay, you know, we should really have a discussion about what is foreplay really because it means different things to different people. Yes, and not all foreplay are sexual. And um, we've got a lot to cover. I'm already all like excited. This this whole prep of the foreplay was foreplay for me. <laughs> well, let's hurry up and get this episode over with. <laughs> <laughs> well, as you'll see, it doesn't always lead, need to lead to penetration. Well, that's true. <laughs> anyway, I'm going way too fast. So before we get started into our foreplay episode, let's give a shout out to our sponsor, Power and Mastery. If you want to join the secret club of men who are great in bed, then check out Power and Mastery. It is the most complete sexual mastery training for men. There's going to be something for you if you want to have harder, stronger erection, last longer in bed, increase your sexual skills, and yeah, get great at sexual foreplay. <laughs> so check and it out at powerandmastery.com. <laughs> and then some, not even just the foreplay. But yes, you will learn a lot about foreplay in sexual mastery. All right. So before we go any further, I don't know that we really need to, but we're going to define what is generally considered to be foreplay. So the actual dictionary definition of foreplay is sexual stimulation of one's partner usually as a prelude to sexual intercourse mm -hmm. for meaning before play so yeah generally something you do before you actually have intercourse and as you're going to see this definition is way too limiting we are going to expand your thinking and blow your mind oh yeah oh yeah get ready so why is foreplay important you ask well foreplay triggers physiological and physical responses that make you want sex and do it more often. I mean, it keeps the arousal flowing, making it easier to go from zero to 10 in mere seconds or minutes because sometimes, well, actually most of the time, we don't all get aroused at the same time. And so for some people, it will take a little bit longer. For others, it's a different thing that gets them aroused. So having foreplay helps to keep this arousal flowing and going, making it easier to get into the sexy mood. Yeah. <laughs> so what are some examples of foreplays? I know we're getting really basic. We're not here to bore you, but we got to lay a really strong foundation because this is essential for like a solid ground. Yeah, you know, we, we have to give you a basic idea uh, and then we're going to expand it a lot and change it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so foreplay means different thing to different people. And please note, just like I mentioned earlier, it doesn't have to lead to intercourse. It could be the main event on its own. Foreplay doesn't have to lead to penetration and intercourse. And this is the third time already that I'm saying it in less than five minutes because that's that important. <laughs> well, yeah, and especially when we get to our definition of what foreplay means, it's mm -hmm. going to be really important that people understand that concept. Mm -hmm. um, but we, we'll wait till we get there because we've got a couple of things we want to talk about before that. But just, yeah, really important to remember it doesn't have to lead anywhere. Mm -hmm. So, but... What's interesting is when you when you look at the dictionary definition of foreplay, it says usually as a prelude to sexual intercourse. Mm -hmm. 
So there's two interesting things about that. The first one is it says usually. It doesn't say always, mm-hmm. right? So there's they're already starting to agree with us. <laughs> but then, this, then the second thing is um, <clears throat> even though it says usually, it implies that that's really kind of what it's for is mm-hmm. to lead to sexual intercourse. So it, it's interesting the way that, that the dictionary definition is worded. So that's why we felt it was kind of important to go over. So let's talk about some of the things that most people generally consider to be foreplay. Absolutely. Well, let's start with an obvious one, kissing and making out, mm-hmm, heavy mm-hmm. petting. Ooh, you know, that's the kind of things you do when you start your exploration because you can't do anything else. And well, this leads you to some form of satisfaction. Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) (laughs) And, you know, this is, um, yeah, in fact, while researching this, I was reading that, um, because you mentioned heavy petting in Mm -hmm. this, that um, that sort of petting type of foreplay in some places like in uh, Africa, Mm -hmm. that is all they're allowed to do until they're actually married. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that's pretty sad. So that's a long foreplay. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Oral sex could be considered another foreplay. Um, Verbalizing things like the discussion that we were having. And it doesn't have to be dirty talking. It could be dirty talking. But for people who are turned on by words and concepts like me, that uh, verbalization and using words turned me on. You know, I, I think that we ended this oral sex way too quickly. Oh, really? There's yeah. more to it? Did you want to add? <laughs> <laughs> well, I did want to acknowledge that some people consider that sex as opposed to foreplay. Well, I mean, look at the word. Oral sex. There's sex yeah, in it. Yeah, yeah. It definitely goes a little further than, say, kissing or touching. So I just, I kind of wanted to acknowledge that some people would go, wait a minute, that's not foreplay. That's actual sex. But... It can be foreplay too. It just sort of depends on your definition. Mm -hmm. Well, other things could be things like sexy dancing, striptease. It could be things like sensory play where you um, engage your senses. And we'll talk more about that later. It could be things like porn or sexy video. Now, you don't have to watch other people having sex. You could. Everyone basically nowadays has a phone. So there's... It's super easy to put it on a tripod and film yourself having sex. And trust us, it's a massive turn on. Really? It's not like we've ever done that. (laughs) (laughs) Well, (laughs) yes, we've done it. This is why we're telling people it's a good thing to do. Shh. (laughs) <laughs> sorry just, mom and dad just kidding <laughs> <laughs> well, but here's the thing like what's awesome to you about um, making your own movie is that you get to do exactly what turns you on and you get to appreciate one another very differently and it helps you getting over the embarrassment of what you sound like or look like and you can watch your partner reacting to watching you having sex like to the, the two of you having sex and it's actually really hot because then you get to see it through your partner's eyes just make sure you don't sink it to the cloud that's all (laughs) (laughs) turn turn that sync function off first (laughs) all right let's talk a few more things here that we can consider foreplay and and i'm sure there are more by the way but um central massage is another option um and also massage like using your hands in doing research just before this show we were texting with our sister-in-law and i asked her hey by the way what's your favorite foreplay you know random things you ask your sister-in-law right any given time and you know she was (laughs) gracious enough to answer me back that actually it was a back rub Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah so using your hands massages it doesn't even have to be sensual or sexual cuddling and hugging can be great foreplay as well as talking and i think talking kind of goes with the verbalizing with the dirty talking like there's so many aspects of talking not just dirty talking yeah and you know i put on here using your hands and Mm -hmm. i I noticed you skipped over that because we already talked about massage but specifically what i wanted to say with using your hands was using your hands to stimulate each other's genitals. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, you had to be a little more specific there, Kevin. <laughs> well, I figured I would elaborate <laughs> while we were on the air. 
<laughs> but that that's a form of foreplay, right? Absolutely. And again, there's probably more, you know, like for me, oh, well, why not talking about this? I'm very curious, Kevin. Let's start with you. Tell us about your foreplays. What are the things you love as foreplays for yourself? To receive as foreplay or to give? Well, that's a two parts question now. You just made it even bigger. <laughs> <laughs> so start with receiving well, and easy. then with giving. <laughs> Receiving. Okay, I love touch. So any form of touch is a great foreplay for me. So massage, even, you know, back rub, shoulders, genitals, whatever. That's one of my favorites for sure. Um, especially if it's like on a weekday or something and we're kind of tired and stressed from long work days. Like in order to really get in the mood for sex, it helps to relax me. So mm -hmm. touch by far is one of my favorites. Um, let's see, you know, we put here on the list, sexy dance. Okay. And since you are a dancer and you like to do those for me, I put it up there as one of my favorites. It always gets me in the mood. Mm. <laughs> and then of course, uh, oral sex. Yeah. I was wondering if that one was finally going to come. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, 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 not during foreplay. <laughs> No, so th those would be a couple of my favorite ones for sure out of the list. Um, I, I would put cuddling on there too, you know, especially if it's naked. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, and what about giving? Are they different? Well, because I know you're not so much of a dancer. So anytime I ask you for a little strip tease, it comes with a little like, eh, are you sure? It I'm depends. not in the mood. I got to be in the mood. for that. You're right. The last time you asked, I was definitely not in the mood. But I have given you a few good ones. That is correct. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So is there a difference? Is there something more in giving that is different? Or does it vary depending on who you're giving to? You know, f when it comes to giving foreplay, really what's most important is that it's the kind that you want. Mm -hmm. um, so... It doesn't necessarily matter to me as long as you're enjoying it. Because mm -hmm. the whole point of it is supposed to get you in the mood. It's mm -hmm. supposed to make you hot, make you want to have sex with mm -hmm. me. So whatever that <laughs> is, <laughs> is what I like to give. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so and you, you like touch too. So sometimes touch is a, is a good one for you, especially if you're a little too stuck in your head. That often helps. Um, you know, oral sex definitely always helps. <laughs> <laughs> but here's another one that you like a lot. Yes. Oh, you're going to say mine for me? Go for it. I know what you're going to say. Appreciation. Talking, yes. Yeah. So, <laughs> some some form of talking. And, oh, and yeah. in your case, appreciation. Well, so yeah. th I like to, to do that with you because I know that you like it. 100% for me, my foreplays, my turn-ons, like... Honestly, it's I pretty much as a default will go to talking. And sometimes I have to pause because talking is not always appropriate. If if Kevin's super tired and I'm trying to like talk, 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 and, and it's actually draining him rather than energizing him and it's energizing me. Sometimes I pause and I go like, what am I trying to achieve through this? And oftentimes I realize that I'm trying to create a connection or a heart connection. And that happened not too long ago where I said that. I, was, I paused and I was like, you know, what I really want is a heart connection. And I thought, is there another way to create a heart connection? And I think we literally like just hugged naked. And that really led to that and helped me, helping me drop. So sometimes I think we have default pathways of what we know works for us. But it's not always the best strategy for the moment of what's needed or for the two people involved. And I think that's very important. Also, I think another really big turn on for me, and it's one we're still working on four and a half years in, is kissing. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. I'm not as, as big of a kisser as you are. That's true. Yeah. I love kissing. I could do this for hours. And Kevin's like, after half a second, he's like, oh, but it's getting wet. Oh, my God. Yes, <laughs> yeah. that's the whole point. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm totally fine with kissing and i love kissing you but like if we're kissing for more than a few minutes i'm like what are we in high school now when, when all we could do is kiss you know maybe fondle each other a little bit i'm like come on let's move on to something more fun <laughs> absolutely so i think this would be mine would definitely be the kissing the talking um and then some touching but actually touching may not be the first thing I want to go to sometimes there's a part of me that 
is not wanting the touching because I'm thinking I want the head connection first, but in reality, I need the touching. I don't know if that really makes sense for you listening, uh, but probably every woman listening are like, yeah, I get this. So sometimes well, like Kevin will be like, okay, you have no choice. Women, lay down. I'm touching you. <laughs> and <laughs> Always works. It actually always does. Even if I'm like, no, but no, but no. You know, we also have a whole <laughs> rule around like uh, when I say no, um, it, it, I mean, well, actually, there's a way of saying no. But if I just say, well, I'm not sure. If I really say no, it's a real no. It's a clear no. He knows it's a no. But if I go like, oh, I don't know. I don't really want it. It's kind of a game and it is a, a foreplay on its own of being chased by you and having like a power dynamic going on. Yeah. Okay. So there has to be a huge caveat here with (laughs) with what you just told everybody. (laughs) Here's the thing. The most important thing that you could know about, you know, any sort of sexual engagement that you're going to have with somebody is that yes means yes. No means no. And maybe means no. Mm -hmm. If somebody's not a hundred percent. Yes then it's a no no. here's the thing that she just said is a no for her might be a maybe or maybe for her might be a yes or you know so but here's the here's the reason why she can do that is because we've had this conversation right i know that she's already told me what to look for so she makes it very clear when something's a no she's like no i think nope no Mm -hmm. and if she's like well i don't know i don't know I know this about her because we've been together long enough that she likes to kind of play that little power play game and that sometimes that's what she wants. And here's the thing. If I guess wrong and that's not actually what she intended in that moment, she'll lay down a harder no and then it's like, okay, yeah, then I know. But actually at the beginning of our relationship, you never pushed it further when I was saying like, I, I'm not sure. And I was like, why are you stopping? And then we literally <laughs> sat down and this is something we're going to talk about um, in a little bit more about foreplay. But I literally sat you down and was like, let me explain to you how I function, what works for me. And this is what I really want when I say this and this is how I see it and that's what it looks like. And it took a few years of us being together and exploring before we found the groove of what really worked. So it's not something that we did from the get-go. It's not something that I would do with any stranger. It's something when you're like in an established relationship, a committed relationship, whatever that looks like for you and you've had the time to build the trust, the connection and you've had the talk not when having sex but at a different time. Yeah. The important thing to know, guys, is if she is unclear and you don't already have this agreement, that means don't, no. Don't push forward. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. That that basically means no. So that was an important caveat. But but it's it is actually a fun game once you <laughs> once you understand all of that. So okay. So thank you for sharing the things that uh, are turn on for you. You're what, welcome. What you like for foreplay. <laughs> <laughs> so this all kind of leads us. So we've talked about you know. What is the dictionary definition? What are things that most people consider foreplay? And then we talked a little bit about, you know, what we like to do for foreplay. But we kind of have our own definition of foreplay. Mm-hmm. This is something that we teach in our courses. I'm sure we've talked about it multiple times here on the show. Yes. But it's... Foreplay is basically the gap in between the last time you had sex and the next time you have sex. And what that means is that it's not something that starts as soon as you get into the bedroom and close the door and and get in sexy mood. It's something that starts as soon as you're done with lovemaking until the next time you have sex again. Yeah, and it's it's what we call the constant state of arousal. And Mm -hmm. that I know we've talked about on the show before where it's like, Rather than if, you, if, if 100 miles an hour equals sexual intercourse, rather than trying to go from zero to 100 mm-hmm. all of a sudden, if you have that constant state of arousal, you've been doing this all the time throughout the day, every day, when it's time for sex, maybe you only have to go from 40 to 100 or 60 mm-hmm. to 100. It's a much shorter distance because you've already got a little bit of that turn on there. Mm-hmm. Um, Absolutely. So I, I think the, the point I really want to emphasize here is don't think of foreplay as only something you do for five minutes before you're about to have sex. 
No, because this is never going to last. You're not going to sustain that in a long-term relationship. Exactly, especially <laughs> in a long-term relationship. That that probably works in a new relationship, you know, <laughs> but in a long-term relationship, that doesn't work. Yeah. So think of foreplay as little things that you do every day, in, you know, as, as you're, you mm -hmm. go through the course of your normal day, little things, a little grab here, a little kiss there, a little massage here or there. All right, all right. So you're going a little fast because this is where we're going to go on how to do foreplay. Well, yes, that's true. But before we do that, we want to invite you into our um, Relationship Synergy program. So if you're longing for more connection, deeper intimacy and red hot passion in your relationship, and that includes foreplay, and you're a committed <laughs> couple who loves each other but has lost a spark and has fallen into a boring routine, we have a special invite for you. We've created Relationship Synergy. It's a cutting edge next level intimacy program for the modern couple to help you fire up your love life. So we will help you transform your love life forever. And you can find more about Synergy at selenremycom forward slash Synergy. All right. So let's we're going to split how to do foreplay into two sections the first okay. one is how to do your standard foreplay like how to do it well you know <laughs> um and with some details that i think a lot of people just overlook mm -hmm. you know because i think a lot of times people are just like oh if i just stroke right here or lick right there it's all mm -hmm. good but but there's so much more that that could be done mm -hmm. and then we'll we'll get back to that constant state of arousal piece Ooh. that i already started talking about all right. So when you are thinking about foreplay, think about sensual. Think senses. So it's important to create an environment that invites all of the senses to be stimulated. So we're going to break it down. Of course, what are your senses, right? So we'll start with sight. You want to have a beautiful, distraction-free environment that when you look around, it invites relaxation and hopefully even like puts you in a mood of just like, oh, this is sexy, right? Um, and this is one thing as a little side note that we, we cover that a lot when we work one-on-one -on -one with our clients, but your bedroom should be a sanctuary for your love. And so that's another place where you have TV and all the photos of your kids and things that don't feel very sexual. This is where you have the sexy photos of each other, where you have something that reminds you of the love that you have for one another. Um, and you reserve the family photos for the living room, for the kitchen, for the hallway, for different places. Your bedroom, it's one mission is to give you good rest and good sex. Yeah, and, and so obviously you want things that uh, cultivate that or that inspire mm -hmm. that. And you also want to remove things that are distracting. So, yes. so there, there may be things in there that, you know, it's, n it's not that they're, it's not that they're not aiding in creating that mood. It's just that they're distracting. Like one of the things they always say is you shouldn't have a bookshelf loaded with books. You know, it's like a feng shui thing in your bedroom because it's distracting because every time you see it, you start scanning the titles of the books and stuff like that. Or a laundry pile that you see so that you're reminded that you haven't done the laundry. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So you, you, you want to remove all the things in your bedroom that could be distracting, that remind you of all the tasks that keep you in your head space, mm -hmm. right? And prevent you from getting into your body space. Things that are just a flat out turn off, like, you know, for most people, I think, uh, you know, if you're about to, you're trying to get in the mood and then you look over at like pictures of your kids, that, 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 that does not help the mood at all. So you remove all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff and you create this sanctuary that um, is relaxing and is sexy. It's, it, mm -hmm. it's conducive to the uh, event that you're trying to create. <laughs> <laughs> so then we're going to think about sounds. Use music to transport each other. Use your voice to seduce each other. Whisper how much you appreciate her or him in their ears and or things you love about your partner's body. So again, this is like, look at how we're using sounds here. We're using it as music, which most people will think about, but your voice is sound. What are you doing with your voice? Or use sounds. Like, Mm, oh, you know these types. You know I'm not gonna go too far because it's gonna be absolutely like gerated. Um, or, or the other day we have this giant crystal singing bowl, <laughs> and I was playing this giant crystal singing bowl, and it it vibrates everything within like 
five or six feet of, uh -huh. of where it's sitting it just vibrates uh -huh. so i had you laying down and i was just with my legs that. open yeah. and i was totally feeling it yes. yeah yeah absolutely here are the kinky things we do <laughs> that's right <laughs> <laughs> sound bowls <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty ridiculous, but mm -hmm. it works. So who cares? You know, don't don't yuck somebody else's yums. That's a very important rule here. Um, you know, if it turns you on and you like it and you're not harming anyone, go for it. Yeah, that's really a rule of thumb. Okay, now we're thinking senses of smell. So use things that will really like again activate that sense like essential oils or candles scented massage oils so whether it's a diffuser or it's a candle or it's something you put on each other smells really help also what's pretty cool about smells that i've noticed is there's kind of a pavlovian response to certain smells if you always use a particular scented oil for a particular action which is really sexy you're literally going to start to get turned on just by smelling it Absolutely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love this. Of course, now we've got the sense of touch that you need to bring into your foreplay. And of course, we talked about using hands. That's what Kevin was talking about earlier. But you can go beyond that and think of like fabrics um, or a silky underwear that you're wearing uh, that you have on you or something you use on each other. Um, you could even use like a scarf, a silk scarf and just like um, like caress each other with this. I mean, feathers, I mean, so many different things, but you want to think of that. And mm -hmm. it doesn't all have to be silky. It could even be like different sensations. It could sensations. be soft and furry. It mm -hmm. could be, you know, just something that's pleasurable, something that um, is pleasurable to the touch and pleasurable to, you know, when you're just moving it around in your skin. It could even just be having, you know, silk or satin sheets or something. Like Absolutely. Just things that stimulate in a positive way. Um, a response. Touch, yeah. And you can use also temperature with this, like heat or cold, warm, like different things. Some people love really cold. I don't, but I know of a few people who love it. And so you could use that um, ice cubes or put, put like a spoon in the freezer and literally like use it later. Or like another game that I really like is trying to guess what I'm touching you with. So you blindfold <laughs> your partner <laughs> and you get things from the kitchen or wherever you want. And you have them to guess what the heck you're using on them. Well, remember when we played that game and it was guess which I have was blindfolded and it was it was uh, guess which body part is touching you. <laughs> oh, that one too. Yes. <laughs> I, I failed that one. <laughs> you sure did. <laughs> OK, we have one more sense that we haven't brought into the experience here, which is taste. And so think of things from fruits that you can feed each other to the taste of your own lips, especially if the person is blindfolded. It can be so erotic and sensual to play with that with the taste or just the taste of each other's genitals. I mean, that's sexy, too. I mean, really, it can go a long way here. I let you use your wild imagination. Yeah, and you know, I'm going to add another one on here, and you sort of said it, but in a different way. Okay. Which is, I'm going to add temperature, because a lot of this stuff is like, it's sort of setting the scene, mm -hmm. right? And then a very important thing when it comes to setting the scene is making sure that it's warm. <laughs> because if it's not warm, nobody wants to take their clothes off. <laughs> so that could be uh, setting up in front of the fire, it could mean having, you know, a big, nice, warm blanket. Mm -hmm. It could mean having uh, uh, maybe something like a, a heating blanket or a jade mat or something underneath you. Um, you know, if it's summertime and it's super hot, then you, you might want to cool things down a little bit. But for most of the rest of the year, <laughs> <laughs> make sure that it's the environment itself is warm. Mm hmm. So I want to address a big question that we hear a lot with people, which is what if my partner oh. doesn't seem interested in foreplay? Hold on. We, we, we have to cover this, right? We've already talked about the constant state of arousal well, earlier. Is there something else you want to add? about? Yeah, I just got started on it and you were like, wait, don't go there. All right. Well, keep keep coming, Kevin. <laughs> Well, because when we also uh, started this section by saying first we were going to cover mm. what what most people consider foreplay, and then we were going to go into um, more of the constant state of arousal. Mm -hmm. So I didn't I didn't want to disappoint you all since we promised you we would talk about that. Sorry, so, I shot came you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> so, so the first thing is, is all those things we just talked about, about setting the scene. So combine those with that list we gave you at the beginning of the show of things that most people consider mm -hmm. foreplay. foreplay, right? So combine the smell and the sound and all that with the massage and the oral sex and all those other things we talked about. Multiple different ways you can combine that to create all kinds of different things for your foreplay. Now, outside of the bedroom, outside of the actual lovemaking session, there's what we call the constant state of arousal. And I started to give you a couple of ideas about uh, what that would look like. And, and I thought we should give them a few more. So basically, the goal here is that you want to turn your entire life into a giant foreplay. Yeah. I mean, that really is it. Um, but what that looks like is that you want to acknowledge that you are sensual sexual beings throughout the day. There shouldn't be a day that goes by without having stimulated a little bit of that energy. Yeah. And so some examples of that would be like, like Celine really likes appreciations. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what if the only time I gave her appreciations was right before sex? Oh yeah, what? I wouldn't want it probably. Well, as you, much. no, you wouldn't because <laughs> because you here's what you would think. You would think the only reason you're appreciating me is because you want to fuck me. Mm -hmm. That that's the association that that you would make. Mm -hmm. So the idea is, to, uh, you know, when it comes to appreciations, is to give appreciations all the time. Absolutely. So that she's always feeling appreciated. You want to keep the touch going. Lots mm -hmm. of people, they only touch each other and there's a certain way, sequence of touching that happens that leads to penetration. You want to think about touch as being something you do because you're in a relationship with each other, not because it has to lead to something in particular. As a matter of fact, for all the men listening right now, it's very important. Stop always associating your special touch with when you want to have sex. Make it as part of your daily routine with no agendas or expectation. And trust me, she will receive that so much more enthusiastically. Oh, yes, absolutely. So all of those things, you know, make sure that, you, you know, if she likes to kiss, kiss her on a regular mm -hmm. basis, mm -hmm. you know, um, depending on, on what kind of agreements you have. Like, like I know Celine actually loves when I grab her butt. You know, or walk by and grab her boobs. Not, not every woman's going to like that, right? So, like, if you're just, like, walking through the kitchen and you're like, er, er, you know, like, <laughs> a lot of women are going to get mad at you. But if you know that that's something that she likes, then do it on a regular basis. Don't just wait for that one time when it's, oh, now it's time for sex, right? Mm -hmm. and, and so that's the idea is a lot of these things can be done all the time. And if they're done in playful, sort of teasing fashion, when both of you know that th there's no time for sex, you're in the middle of the day, you got work, you got kids, you got whatever it is, but you're keeping that sort of fire stoked mm -hmm. so that when it is time for sex, it's like, boom, you're, you're already... A, a significant percentage of the way there. Mm -hmm. and by the way, I know we've already said that in some shows, but I'm going to say it again because it's important. Oral sex is great for play, giving him a blowjob. I'm going to talk specifically for a guy. And it's really, really, really important to make this that it doesn't have to end in an ejaculation or in sex. And guys, if you want more blowjob, just make it that she can make it as long as she wants, whether it's a three minutes, five minutes, and that it doesn't end when you come in her mouth or anywhere else. It ends when she's done. Yeah, I know. It's, pr it's probably one of the biggest reason women don't give more blowjobs is because they're not always in the mood to have more. somebody ejaculate in their mouth or take however long it takes, right? Or just that then they know if they start him, they have to finish him right. in whatever way. And there's too much pressure. So yeah, this yeah. is very important. But for the sake of time. I want to move yes. on and address a big, big, big question that people have, a big objection. We want to remove all objections for you to have plenty of foreplay. What if, what if my partner doesn't seem interested in foreplay? And we have already started talking about this with the idea of like, hey, um, don't make it that it has to lead to a certain outcome and don't always tie your foreplay to like only when you want to have sex. But... Also, another important thing that Kevin mentioned earlier that was really important, and that's why I want to bring it back, when we were talking about what turns us on, he says, what I love to give is what you love to receive and what you want. And ultimately, I think that's the key of that. But if you don't know yet what your partner likes, number one thing you need to start with is, first of all, you're going to have to have communication. But in the communication, it's important that you stay positive, don't blame, shame, criticize. Um, and so it's more powerful to say, 
I love it when you gently stroke my body towards my pussy and bring energy there rather than you never give my body any attention. Oh, yeah. Big Wh difference between those two. Right. Which one do you think you, that heel responds best to or she because it's it, it works both. It's not like gender specific. Um, but like if you start to make it irresistible or, or that part, the partner is going to be much more excited about giving this to you. And then there's a whole thing about show and tell because sometimes people don't give it to you because they're not sure about doing it well. And show and tell is about literally showing and telling what you like. And it's really fun game to to play on a date night or... I mean, you should always be doing this when it comes to sex. If you're not getting what you want, you want to tell the person what it is you do want. And if they're not sure, show them how to do it. Exactly. And then it's also asking them, be curious. Like Kevin said, I want to give her what she likes. Like those discussions we've had where, and it's not because you liked it like, or you knew that two years ago that um, um, you she's still going to like the same things. Things will change. And that's the beauty of it when you're in long-term relationship. You don't have to be stuck in always doing the same thing. And I love that. And then one last really, after you've asked what they want and the partner tells you, is also the person, if you are the one who's not getting enough for playing your, in your view, tell them why it's important to you. Because if, the, the, if your partner's not doing the foreplay you want, it's because they don't know why it's so important. And when you why, it's important to get very real. Things like, it helps me get wetter. Or um, I get harder for you so that when it's time to penetrate you, I can give you a good pounding. Or it relaxes me. Oh, yeah, so that then I can have a strong erection. Mm -hmm. Or it helps me have stronger orgasms. It gets you out of your head and into your body. It helps me feel closer to you. Um, it increases my connection to my body. Now I start to know erogenous zones and I'm starting to have a full body orgasms rather than just a genital experience. Absolutely. So once you start to put it into like all these great big whys, then it's like, yeah, of course I want to give that to the to my person. Mm -hmm. right? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, I would also say, too, that um, if you're somebody that is sort of struggling with your uh, sexual performance, then foreplay can also be a way to help make up for that. Right. So if you know that, that you can't last very long, well, extend the foreplay. Yeah, and the cool thing too in making foreplay that's, that doesn't go too high too fast because if you struggle with lasting long enough, um, you can't go too quickly because then it will be too arousing for you um, and you'll explode. And so that can help you acclimate to feeling more sexual energy, feeling your partner having more of that and gently acclimate to it so that you're not getting overwhelmed by the amount of sexual energy and then explode. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. I had a few things I wanted to add. Maybe I can do give you yeah, three real quick three three tips. tips that we want to leave you with here. Uh, maybe more unusual for play because we've given you more of the usual things, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. um, and we want you to think outside of the box, and we want you to start for playing right away. So <laughs> number one, learn something new and exciting together, and it's about developing your creativity because creativity and sexual energy are closely linked, and people who do new new things it fires new things in the brain and that it also makes that sexual energy more alive you know when people say i feel so juiced up and alive well it's the same energy in the bedroom and outside of the bedroom so if you start to learn new things in life you're going to be turned on by these new things and if you do those together that's also going to create a special bond and then it's going to help you want to do more together Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, something that people have forgotten because we live in this very technological world. Write each other sexy letters. When was the last time you wrote a love letter or a sexy letter? It could be a little note. It could be a card. It could be something you mail in the mailbox. I even did that for you once. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, if you've forgotten how to write, because it's basically a lost skill at this point, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you can do you can do texts. I mean, sometimes yes. you send me sexy texts or even even little um, little memes that are fun. Yes. Stuff like that. Absolutely. But I wanted to think a little bit outside of the box yeah. here. And then the last tip, and it's kind of one of our fun rules for our date night, which is 
Um, basically, you can play any game, like quiz game, board game, poker, with a twist. And really, this is what our rule is, is we have to do something together and we have to be naked. That's one of our date night rules, yes. as we've said many times on this show. Exactly. So we don't <laughs> always play a game. The only game is we get naked and do something together. Naked. <laughs> <laughs> Did we mention naked? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely increases your chances of some fun. <laughs> So I'm definitely much warmer than when we started this show. That definitely got me going. I hope you got as inspired and juiced up and turned on as me. Um, don't delay. Start right away. And uh, yeah, shoot us an email. Report to us how this is working for you. Absolutely. And you know what? Just have fun with it. <laughs> all right, everybody. That's all the time we have for this episode. And we will see you next week. We hope you like this episode of the Love Lab Podcast. If you enjoy this show, subscribe, leave us a review, and share it with your friends. And for more free, exclusive content, join us in the Passion Vault at CelineRemy.com forward slash vault. That's C-E-L-I-N-E-R-E-M-Y dot com forward slash vault. Thanks for listening. And remember, you're amazing. <laughs>